Hey everybody, welcome to a mystery box episode on Tested. Adam Savage here, I'm in the Armor and Conservation Lab at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. And I'm with Ted, how are you sir? I'm well. You have some mysteries to show me. Yeah, so when I say mysteries, what I mean really are like things that are hidden, surprises, Easter eggs, okay. if you will, right? Sh should I put on gloves for this? Uh, probably not, not okay. this one, right. yeah. Fair yeah. Enough. Um, so, Everything that's here, we're always looking for clues and information. Yeah. We want to study it, right? And sometimes when you pick something up, all of the secrets and information there is, is either just lost mm -hmm. or it's right there for you to find. But some things you really have to dig around for. Okay, and so that might and be And these things, are things like maker's marks? Like and, maker's marks, okay. exactly. Sometimes they leave behind marks or serial numbers or inscriptions and things like that. And these, you know, take a little bit of cleaning or some disassembly to find, things like that. But occasionally, you don't even know that there's something that you're missing. You know, yeah. there's like a, a maker's mark that's been completely hidden. No one knows it's there. You pop a rivet and lo and behold, there it is. Or you do an x-ray and you're like, what's going on, wow. right? Yeah. So I've picked some things here that have, I think, just some interesting stuff that was hidden in them. Yeah. And I kept them covered so I would get the full <laughs> reveal on camera, right? So this one, this I'm going to start with something that is semi-surprising, and then we'll okay. move up into increasing surprisingness. Excellent. How does that sound? Okay. All right. All right, so big reveal. Ta-da. Oh! So I have some pistols here. Okay. So this is what we're going to be looking at, but yeah. I have to tell the story first. <laughs> okay. And in the story, there's even more little mysteries. Okay. <laughs> so this pistol here is from 1650. It is French. It's made by a man named Cunet and had a, a, a surprising thing hidden in it. To understand that surprising thing, I'm gonna start with this one, which is from 1775. This is a fairly ordinary flintlock pistol. Right. Okay, it's Irish. This is about it, the peak of flintlock pistols. This is, this is your epitome of it right here, right? So you've got your lock, your stock, yeah. your barrel, and then often not mentioned, the ramrod. Yep. Okay, yep. this is a nice example. Oh, with a Fact, nice little screw at the tip. I think we were discussing earlier baleen, that's a piece of baleen. It is. That's a piece of baleen. What looks like a, a knitting needle it looks is actually from a baleen whale's, yeah, the a big, whale's baleen. The big hard part, not the fuzzy yeah, yeah, part, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you got this little ball removing screw on the end I've there. been looking at pictures of these little things, little but I hadn't seen thing, one in yeah. person. Yeah, for, and for pulling out the old charge and that's stuff. That's a piece of horn there. Okay. okay. So classic ramrod, yeah, right? Yeah. You, you pour in your powder, your wadding and your ball. Mm -hmm. Get it packed, da, da, yep. da. If you're a little more graceful than me, you put it around with a nice little flip of the wrist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. As we think of flintlocks, this kind of is yeah. it. Yeah. Late 18th century. Yeah. Totally the peak. And flintlocks were, it, were still being used during the Civil War, but we had moved on to other bullets and cartridges right. and things. This is classic European. Okay. This is a European lock and a European barrel, but it has been restocked in the Caucasus. Oh. Right? So we have this beautiful uh, silver gilt with yellow inlaid all over it like this. And interestingly, we have a false ramrod. Oh, it's, like, it's just like an molded aesthetic impression of a ramrod, not an actual right. ramrod. Does not actually yeah. remove or ramrod. And the reason for that was, at the time, in the area, it was common practice to carry a separate ramrod. So I selected this one out of storage because it has some similarities yeah. in decorative style yeah. and material. Roughly the same uh, date. These are both 19th century. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this sort of ramrod, you carried it at your belt or wow. hanging from your, your cartridge sash, something like that. But it effectively works the same way. And was carrying it on your person a way of demonstrating your station? Well, it gave you more things to decorate. Right. Uh, an opportunity to put in more uh, niello and silver. I think there's um, some fun you could have with all of your things. You're right. Hanging yeah, on, that's right? what You're, I was saying. It's like it's another fashion accoutrement. Well equipped. But it also gives you one other opportunity to shank a guy. What? <laughs> what? So we have a hidden poignard sort of. Dagger. Yeah, that's hiding another re a inside. shiv, a literal shiv. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just hiding in there. Wow, with a brutal triangular oh, yeah. blade. That yeah. was yeah, let's um, get a little close up there. That was a real pig sticker. Yeah. And and hiding knives inside of other things is something we find all over the collection. Do you really? Um, knives inside of 
the handle of an axe, uh, knives inside the handle of a mace, <laughs> knives inside the body of Japanese scabbards. They had little kozuka and A knife and inside of a knife. <laughs> the knives inside of a knife. I have seen in the, I believe it was in the collection in Dresden, there's a sword, large two-handed sword that you press a button and the pommel pops off and there's a whole dagger inside the grip of the sword. It's all mechanically spring-loaded. Wow. It's a monster, I love it. So the reason I am showing you <laughs> yeah, these yeah. ramrods is to talk a little bit more about this pistol. That's a which, long barrel. It's very long, double-barreled. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We have yeah. two barrels, an over wow. under arrangement. Oh. What are we missing? A uh, ramrod. A ramrod. So when we acquired this in, I forget, 2018, I initially thought perhaps these little holes here might have been some sort of attachment for a ramrod that would have ridden along the side sure, in, this, these in right. this channel. Yeah, yeah. But there's only a couple holes here, and we decided that wasn't the case, and nope, not this side either. Oh, they've done the lock. Upside down. Oh, we'll come to that in a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, we thought, after much pondering, oh, can't find a ramrod, no evidence of it ever being on here, perhaps it was mm -hmm, meant mm -hmm. to go with something that came with yeah, it yeah. like this. All right, so, fine. We should take a look at this etching on here, which is marvelous. Really fine etching, beautiful right. carving oh, on wow. the hammer. Super, yeah. The best part, though, I'm going to show you is on the other side. We definitely want to get that. Is the sea monster with a trumpet for a nose. What? Which I, is my new favorite you that know, is spirit animal, insane right? insane <laughs> how beautiful that is. I and love the that shading thing. on it is so sensitive. I want to hear him play. Yeah. A, little, a little music. It sounds know. like a Vuvuzela, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, Dizzy Gillespie, look out, right? So the cool thing about this, though, I thought, uh -huh. was... We put this in the half cock position. I, I see it. Yes! We can simply rotate. Oh! What the f And we get two shots where That's the other guy how only you get has two one. Shots. There's a lot of different mechanisms for this. There's some that simply rotate, there's yeah. others where the lock is there one lock here and one lock here, and you would fire the first charge and right. then the second charge. Those didn't work so great, I think. <laughs> um, and now I've gone and all right, well, I'll turn it back later. So Double barreled, no ramrod, yep. neat thing, yeah. beautiful yeah. etching, yeah. great gun, worthy acquisition. I clean it up, I put it in storage because we didn't have anywhere to put it yet. Yeah. Sometime later, one of the curators says, I was running, reading something and I came across the phrase flexible ramrod. And I said, what? <laughs> what? Flexible ramrod? And I couldn't even think of how a flexible ramrod would work and we thought, and he said it was something about it being in the stock. Uh, yeah. And I said, well, <laughs> let's go get it. <laughs> no. What? No. Let's see if I can take this apart without messing it up here. It's a little bit, okay, there we go. So <gasps> you would fold this bad boy out and, oh, there's one more turn. There we go. Oh, and, and that, that's your tamper, not. That's your tamper. And I thought, but it's so bendy. But then I realized, you put that inside the barrel, it's it can't not bend bendy anymore. at all. It's <laughs> right, it going to work. Go anywhere. I can't imagine you'd put much force on it, but um, that is the hidden little flexible ramrod. Just a neat little refinement of the gunmaker, who apparently uh, did several of these. Um, and there are other guns by him in other collections that appear to have this same yeah. mechanism, but I've never been able to, uh, so it's just a hole through the, the grip there. That's incredible. I want to... Got some light? There you go. Oh yeah, yeah just, just down into down the wood. Down into the wood. Yep. And so when, I didn't have it all the way in because it's quite snug, but when right. I pulled it out of storage for us to look at it, I could not see a right. gap. Right, right. I was like, um, you th really? It's, well, I don't know where else it would be. It's got to be this. So I got it under the microscope and a little nylon pry bar that I have, and I'm kind of scooping it around, and eventually I got enough of a gap, I was like, yeah, I think this is it. And uh, mm -hmm. out it came, and uh, I was so happy, Dude. because I don't often get to find really cool, secret, yeah. fun things. So that's the story of the hidden ramrod <laughs> in the French 1650 double-barreled turnover. I believe the type of this mechanism is called a vendor's pistol. A from vendor's the, the pistol. The vendor's, from the oh. inventor. Okay. Um, not Vim Vendors, I think. Different, different <laughs> guy. Uh, all right. 
So that's story number one. Okay, okay. that's a pretty good story. I thought so. <laughs> All right, so now story number two, we're gonna start with these, yeah. the same decoration you see on this helmet, right? This silver, this mm -hmm. yellow. Mm -hmm. This is a Turkish helmet. Um, earlier, th this, so okay, let me back up. Turkish helmet with Caucasian stuff added to it. Okay. So it comes out of so it comes out of the, the same, Ottoman Empire. The some of the decoration comes from the same region. The helmet's made in the Ottoman Empire, moves north into the Caucasus, gets readapted, gets this new decoration added. The decoration is dated 1781. Okay. The helmet is earlier. Um, you remember that flexible uh, arm yeah. slash mm -hmm. leg guard? Mm -hmm. Very similar kind of uh, surface appearance in the metal right, and right, similar yeah. kind of engraving into it. And meanwhile, this stuff from the, eight, you said 1781, 1781, yeah. 1781, like, this is absolutely perfect work. Like It's beautiful work. It looks incredible. So, we acquired, it was in storage. Yeah. It had been on display. Uh, we were going to put it in a book. It hadn't been cleaned in a long time. And so I was like, okay, I'll clean it up for the photo. Yeah. So I'm scrubbing away at it. And, and when you're scrubbing away, you're grabbing, you start with distilled water and move to things? I don't often use water because I don't oh, want to introduce corrosion or enough, anything. Right. But I do start as gentle as possible yeah. and I work my way up. But one of the other things that I really like to do is if something can be taken apart, I prefer to do so. Right. There's times when you shouldn't, times when you can't, but a disassembled object, you get better results, right? Sure. You can clean all the parts instead of kind of trying to just yeah. you know, fudge it, right? But no one wants to cross thread a 400 year old screw. No, crossing threads, bad, <laughs> very bad. Okay, so I'm cleaning, and this is you know pretty easy to clean, yeah, right. But I'm getting up in here, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, this is the gap is this is yeah. what? So I'm like, oh, well, oh, what do you know? <laughs> what happens if you unscrew this finial here? And the answer is, you see the original peak of the helmet. Oh my now someone's added on this threaded top. Oh, look um, at that! There's the rivets. Yeah, for let me the... tip it. You can see yeah. the threading in there, a little brazing, and all the rivets added. But what was really interesting is we found an arsenal mark. That's which, what this is. That that little symbol there. Now we were not surprised by that. Right. We expected that, but it was nice to find it and confirm it. And yeah. it was particularly fun for me because this was pretty early on in my time here, and I had never found a hidden thing before. Yeah. So I was very excited. I was like, it comes apart, and I found an arsenal mark. <laughs> oh, this is so great. And I got it all cleaned up, and I got, you know, photos disassembled, and photos reassembled, and close-ups, and all the details and things. All right. There's more. Part three of the story. Okay. Meanwhile, <laughs> so I was working at that desk over there. Yeah. And uh, Hermes, who was working, I think, at this desk at the time. Okay. Although he might have, he moved a lot around a lot. It doesn't matter. It sort of doesn't matter. He's working on something else for the same catalog. Yeah. He's working on. Oh, I didn't even realize there was something this that there. Holy. Okay. So this is a sword okay. said to be the sword of Murad V, who was for 93 days the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. And it is said that this sword was made for his coronation. Now, there is an actual coronation sword, the sword of, I think it's called the Sword of Osman, mm -hmm. um, which still exists. It's in the Topkapi Palace, I think. Um, so this was not a coronation sword in the sense of like having been girded or crowned. Got it. Right? But it is said that it had been made as a part of the uh, process of his becoming the sultan or celebration of his becoming the sultan. It's possible that that is an attached story. Sure, sure. Uh, it is certainly... It looks ornate it, enough. It's wildly <laughs> ornate. And it's it's interesting because the blade is like oh, early 17th century. The blade is beautiful. You can see all the... But the decoration's all added. The original blade is, you know, just it would have been a plain blade. All this oh, gilding really? and all these jewels were added. Okay. And then the... The hilt is taken from something else, and that's a little bit later than the blade. Oh. But then the, all of this jewel work and all this decoration and the scabbard are 19th century, you know, 1820s sometimes, okay. which is when he was, um, became Sultan. Briefly. Briefly. So um, he's an interesting character, okay? Mm -hmm. So his father is Sultan. 
His father passes away, so his uncle becomes sultan. His uncle is trying to change the laws so that the uncle's children will be the next heirs. Huh. So Murad gets involved with deposing his own uncle, becomes the sultan, and whether it's propaganda or true history, I couldn't really say, but evidently he couldn't really hack it. He had a nervous breakdown. Sure. Started drinking. It would be a terrible job. Became very depressed. Uh, advice was salt from uh, advice was consulted from the very finest European psychiatrists and so on, but at the end of the day, that is not good for the Ottoman Empire. No. And ninety three days later, his younger brother deposed him and had him put away uh, in basically palace uh, house arrest. Got it. Got okay. it. Got it. So this then does not really ever if it's th if it's true that it's from Murad, it doesn't really <clears throat> ever become part of the, I think the the imperial lore. Okay. Right, because he's deposed so quickly. Right. Goes on to the art barely market. Barely assaulted. Barely assaulted. Goes on to the market, uh, comes to us in 1923. So, 1923, it's been in the collection 100, uh, 100 years. Yeah. 100 years. Yeah, yeah. In all that time, no one had ever noticed the secret thing. <laughs> okay, so I'm over there working on this, yeah. and I'm thinking yeah. I'm pretty cool. I found a secret <laughs> yeah. mark on the helmet. Holy. Uh. And then I hear Hermes go, hey, check this out. <laughs> so I come over. He's cleaning the scabbard. Yeah. Now, Hermes, Hermes uh, was my predecessor. He was armor, uh, and uh, he'd been in the Met here for 40-some years before he retired. He's worked on everything in the building. He's done all kinds of things. He knows everything there is to know about conservation and cleaning and finding hidden secret stuff. So he's got the microscope and he's got all his little tiny swabs and his little picks and he's cleaning all the dirt and dust out from between the jewels and yeah, he's yeah. very carefully and lovely, lovingly taking off all the old grime and stuff. So we've got a, a brass scabbard with gold on it. Yeah. We've got emeralds and diamonds. There's nothing on here that you should be finding orange rust spots. All oh, right? right. So when he finds an orange rust spot, he knows that something's odd. So he picks at that and he cleans on that and he's up at the microscope and uh, <laughs> what a secret compartment behind an emerald containing a gold coin from the reign of Suleiman the Magnificent no way the bottom of the jewel is inscribed with a little talismanic script in there you can just it's just cut into the jewel oh, so it's not what okay stunning no one had ever Pop that. Nobody knew. I mean, and that's saying something because, you know, when these things came into the collection, you know, in the 20s and stuff, yeah. um, Dean and his successors, they went over this stuff. They looked at everything. They were right, very right. detailed, meticulous people. But no one had ever figured out that this secret thing opened. It had been, you know, kind of grimed shut. Sure, who yeah. Who knows I mean, how the hinge is barely visible. Barely visible. Well, that's where you put your poison pill, that, clearly. That was our first thing. It was like, yeah, you had your poison in there. Just, you know, you find things in the collection, whether it's a new acquisition or something that's been here for 100 years. Right. You do a little cleaning, you turn something over, you take it apart, and suddenly there's a whole new layer of yeah. information there. Well, and I mean, you guys talk openly about uh, how what you do here is converse with the past. Oh, yeah. And what a lovely thing to be in the midst of conversing with the past and uncovering a whole new facet of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. This one, I, I really... So I, these two happened within the same, like, couple of days? Like, I... Yes. Pretty much, <laughs> I was putting the finishing touches on the lacquer when he said, hey, Ted, come see this. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, my, my pride was short-lived. <laughs> <laughs> There's always somebody. There's always somebody. Who's discover something. And, but you know, that, that's that's Hermes for you. He's he's just over the top guy. What a lovely journey and story. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible.